What's going on everyone? Welcome to another Keyshot Quick Tip. In this video, we're gonna take a quick look at Keyshot's new Exalta Flake controls and get a better idea of how you can use them to create more dynamic and realistic paint finishes. Having the ability to access CGI versions of Exalta's coatings has been an incredible resource for rendering of all kinds. Whether it's transportation related or product related, sometimes a basic paint material just doesn't quite get the job done the way a well-lit Exalta paint does. However, one of the biggest pain points with Exalta paints in previous versions was the lack of control over embedded flake, specifically when rendering transportation-related imagery. Luckily, in Keyshot 10.2, that is a thing of the past. With Keyshot's new Exalta UI, you can now access flake controls from the existing advanced accordion located just under the roughness slider in the Material tab. With the accordion open, you can still access the refraction index and sample sliders, but you'll also notice two new parameters, flake size and flake density, which are both specified in millimeters. The flake size slider controls the individual size of each flake and can be adjusted from a minimum value of zero millimeters, which means no flake is present, to a maximum value of 10 millimeters, which will create flakes that are just under a half inch in size. The second slider is the flake density parameter, which does exactly what its name suggests and allows you to control flake density from a minimum value of zero to a maximum value of one. When applied, metal flakes will automatically match the specular reflection and color of the underlying Exalta material, and the flakes will be randomly distributed in the paint with some flakes appearing brighter than others. And although you can most certainly get creative with flake proportions, I do recommend using some best practices if your goal is to create renders that match common finishes. The first is to ensure that your model's units are imported correctly so they reflect real-world proportions and reduce the chance you'll experience discrepancies when adjusting your flake. If your model is too large, changes in flake size may not even be visible. And if the model is too small, you might encounter some difficulty getting your flake size to mimic real-world paint applications. The next thing to consider is using typical flake sizes to create the most photoreal effect possible. Typically, metallic flaked paint uses flake sizes between 0.02 millimeters and 0.5 millimeters. Using flake at that size on a correctly scaled model will help you produce the most realistic paint application possible, making your renderings that much more photorealistic. At this point, you can let your scene res up for a few moments to preview the effect, and if you're satisfied with the size, density, and overall appearance of your paint flakes, you can go ahead and render out your final images. Note that if you happen to encounter some fireflies or hotspots when using Exalta Flake, try jumping over to the Denoise accordion in the image tab and slide that firefly filter a little to the right. If you are going to use this effect, I do recommend making sure the Denoise parameter slider is set to zero so your newly applied flake does not wash out. And keep in mind that with all Denoise parameters, a little tends to go a long way, so start with a small amount and work your way up from there. Thanks for watching this Keyshot Quick Tip. If you're interested in more useful Keyshot content, hit that subscribe button and get notified as soon as new videos hit the channel. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this tutorial in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, give it a like and share with your friends.